Hey everyone, welcome to Eurogamer. Now, as you can probably tell from all the stuff behind me, I'm a little bit of a nostalgia fan. I'm slightly older than the rest of Team Eurogamer, so I've seen the growth of consoles from my very first computing system, the ZX Spectrum, all the way through till now. And I've kept bits and pieces from all those eras of gaming um, as keepsakes because, uh, yeah, I just, I love to have physical items to remind me of things. For instance, the Spectrum tapes at the back there. Um, I love to be able to pick up the Spectrum tapes, open them up, take the tape out, hear the rattle of the tape, read the inlays, everyone can remember stuff. But there's something about holding an item, especially one that you thought you'd lost and that you found maybe on the trip up to the loft or something. Something about holding that item just kickstarts these memories. It kickstarts really physical memories. Sometimes you can remember smells, you can remember vivid rooms you were in. There's something about nostalgia and finding things that I just find so compelling, which is why I have this huge collection, Spectrum games, uh, I have old toys there, like uh, Ghostbusters toys, got Transformers, there's Amiga stuff. I just, I have all these collectibles from periods of my life because I enjoy being able to pick them up, look at them and revisit them whenever I want. Now this video, if you haven't guessed already, is unscripted. It's just me going on a bit of a rant, a bit of a chat um, about my love of nostalgia and the power of nostalgia. And it's all been um, kicked off and inspired by the release of the Lynx Awakening remake on the Nintendo Switch. Now, nostalgia for childhood things has always been around. It's probably a lot more like in your face nowadays with um, all the forms of entertainment that we have now. But, you know, there was antique toy collectors and stuff before video games were made, people collecting Tonka toy cars and things like that. Um, and nowadays it is quite big business, especially 2019, where it seems or feels at least like remakes or remasters have been kind of bridging the gap between the console generations. We've got new consoles on the horizon, old ones kind of reaching their potential. And while the developers are working behind the scenes on the new console stuff, they can't really do stuff on the older consoles, so they're relying on bringing out remakes and things. Like, for instance, the uh, excellent Resident Evil 2 remake, which I absolutely loved and is one of my games of the year, and Crash Team Racing, which uh, was awarded an essential review in our very own website, Eurogamer.net. And it's not just those games either. We've got the Final Fantasy VII remake on the horizon. We've got a remake of 13 coming out in 2020. I think there's a Battletoads remake as well. Basically, nostalgia is big business right now, and no one is more aware of that fact at the moment than Nintendo. And I know that's true because I spotted this pre-roll advert on a video I was watching, and it it's, it's basically could be starring me. I mean, I've literally written articles about going up into attics and finding treasures and memories up there. So, you know, <laughs> I that advert, that pre-roll advert really, really appealed to me. Uh, because of the nostalgia factor. So for this video, before I go on to talk about how Nintendo has harnessed the power of nostalgia for the Link's Awakening re-release, I just want to talk to you a little bit about my memories of the original Link's Awakening, which I bought on the Game Boy back in 1993. <laughs> So my memories of Link's Awakening actually start with Link to the Past, the third Zelda game and the one that was on the Super Nintendo. I absolutely loved that game. I had it on the Super Nintendo, but um, my parents were divorced. They were separated when I was younger. 
they still are. <laughs> and uh, I had my Super Nintendo at my dad's house. So every time I would go to my dad's house, which was once every other weekend, I would go there, I would play Link to the Past, and I would get a little bit further, get a little bit further, and then I'd have to go home, I'd have to go to school for two weeks, and all that time I'd be thinking in my head, oh, how did I solve this bit I was stuck on? How did I solve this bit I was stuck on? And I come back so excited to play Link to the Past. Um, in the end, I managed to complete Link to the Past a couple of times, and then I moved on to other things. I can't remember. Um, what they were, rock and roll racing and stuff like that. I really enjoyed that. But anyway, one day I picked up a copy of Total Nintendo magazine. Uh, it had like a silver cover on the front and it had a picture of Link on it and it said Zelda 4 review on the front of it or something. I still have the copy of that magazine somewhere up in my parents' loft. I didn't have time to get it for this video, but thankfully a lovely uh, Twitter user managed to send me some scans of it, which you can see right now here. So thank you very much, DK01, for the scans of this. This Zelda review, uh, this Zelda 4 review, absolutely captivated me. Now you've got to remember this is way before the internet existed, and the only way to find out about new games back in those days was either word of mouth or print magazines like this one. You couldn't go onto YouTube and watch trailers. So to try and imagine what the game was like to play, I just sit there and stare for hours at this review. I'd reread it, I'd reread it, I'd stare at the screenshots. I wanted that game so much. I have physical memories of like literally holding that magazine every this was at my dad's as well and every time i went to my dad's i'd look at this magazine i'd be like oh my god i really want it i really want it uh this came out this magazine came out about a month before link to uh before link's awakening came out in the uk um and at that point the there was some rick mail adverts on tv which were absolutely amazing there was one for Link's awakening which i will show you now hi rick mail here i don't know if you're like me immensely rich talented handsome isn't it a bore well i found the answer zelda Link's awakening from nintendo you play a medieval elf named link you travel through many worlds meeting endless characters on your eternal adventures so hey next time you're rick mail why not try zelda Link's awakening i think you'll like it Zelda, Nintendo, an inexhaustible Nintendo. And there was another one which announced the price cut of the Game Boy to £39.99, which it was pretty affordable. Oh, oh yes, this is my favourite one. It's called Big Star, darling. We open on Nintendo's enormous star, brilliant. Cut to wide shot of star, followed by lingering tracking shot of star's best side. And finally, trees on enormous close-up of the star that everybody is talking about. Total entertainment. Let's record it. What? Oh, no! Oh, the wrong idea! Yes, Game Boy, an interesting incentive Nintendo. Now, when I say pretty affordable, you got to realise that I was still like pocket money age at this point. So I had to do a couple of months worth of saving in order to be able to get the £40 for the Game Boy and the £25 that Link's Awakening cost. I think I put some birthday money in there too because my and Christmas money because my birthday and Christmas are very close together. Uh, but in the end, I managed to be able to afford <laughs> my own copy of Zelda Link's Awakening and my very own Game Boy. That is the original copy of Link's Awakening that I bought from WH Smith's back in the day. My original Game Boy is in this footage that you're seeing right now. Um, you can't really see the screen very well and it's held up by sellotape because it got a hell of a lot of battering, but that's me there playing my original Game Boy and my original uh, copy of Link's Awakening on it. So, ha, nostalgia. Now, the great thing about having Link's Awakening on the Game Boy was that it was easy to transport around with me. I didn't have to wait two weeks per play session like I did for, ah, the kitty. Hello. Do you like nostalgia too? Yeah, you do. 
<laughs> now, I didn't have to wait weeks between playthroughs um, of Link's Awakening because I had it in my hand all the time. I could play it in the car, although that often, if it was dark, I'd have to chase the light of street lights to see it because there was no backlight to it. Um, I could play it in the living room, I could play it in my bedroom, I could play it wherever, and that meant that I was able to play the game um, through a couple of times. And because of that, there's bits and pieces of this game that are completely stuck in my memory. The two little kids playing outside, the library, the music, the foggy forest, the um, instruments that you collect. All these little snapshots in my brain that I get really happy about when I, I think about them. But I'm not the only one, of course, that has vivid, happy memories about Link's Awakening. Um, not by a long shot. I mean, take this for instance. Here's my good friend Tom Phillips from Eurogamer talking in this week's Eurogamer podcast about his memories of when he got Link's Awakening. When I first played Link's Awakening, I was in my first or second year at middle school. I got my Game Boy uh, for Christmas uh, with... Super Mario Land 1 and Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. It was the yellow Game Boy, the real chunky one. Oh. And uh, the first game that I think I bought for it that wasn't those two games was Link's Awakening. And it was on the recommendation of um, Gareth, at that time my friend. And every day we would meet up in the playground and we would spend our break time talking about Link's Awakening. And he knew the game back to front and I was playing it for the first time. And he knew it so well to the point where I'd say, right, I'm at this dungeon and I'm stuck at this room. And he'd go, okay, right, so in that room you need to hop over the oh this thing, tap the wall here, and you'll find a secret. And then that's all he would tell me. And then I'd go home that night and do that thing. And he'd be right, of course. And I'd get a little bit further. And he, and over the course of like a month, he instructed me through Link's Awakening piece by piece, every break time. And it was incredible. Like we, like we People would go play football and stuff, and me and Gareth would just walk in circles around the playground at my middle school, and he would teach me how to play this game, which was the first Zelda game I ever played, which is one of the reasons that I love it the most. And uh, just the first time I'd ever played a game like that in general, Zelda or not. So yeah, nostalgia is one hell of a drug. I can't get enough of it. There's plenty of you out there that can't get enough of it. And Nintendo know that for a fact because loads of the game has been designed and inspired by nostalgia. For a start, just for a start, um, when I got the, uh, the box out uh, for this video, I was having a flick through the manual and I noticed that one of the first illustrations in that manual um, is pretty much I, I can't see it not being a direct influence to the animated intro to the brand new Switch remake of Link's Awakening. The art style looks really, really similar, and if it hasn't, if it wasn't a direct inspiration, I don't know what was. <laughs> Flicking through old school manuals, by the way, is another <laughs> massive nostalgia hit for me. Um, just open and just. Where have manuals gone? I love them. Look at the art. Look at that artwork. So great. Now, of course, Link's Awakening has had a graphical overhaul, but still, it is a pretty faithful recreation of the game. There's been some quality of life improvements here and there, but it's not a remake in the same sense that, like, Resi 2 uh, was a remake, where things have been changed a lot. Most of the playthrough, most of the way you play through Link's Awakening is the same as it was back in the old days on the Game Boy. But still, just because the graphics are new doesn't mean they can't be nostalgic. For instance, um, in this clip from Digital Foundry's John Linneman in his excellent um, video about this game, he talks about how the, uh, the graphics and the colour tone 
of Link's Awakening are inspired by the colours and the hues of the uh, the Game Boy Color version of Link's Awakening. The first thing that really strikes me here is the devotion to capturing the color scheme and mood of the Game Boy Color version of the game, which is why direct comparisons with that version are so fascinating. So let's begin here on the beach. First note how the wavy texture pattern representing sand has been duplicated in the new game, while the contrast between the blue ocean, sandy beach, and orange tinted stone has been retained. Also check out the footprints left by Link in the remake. Now as we climb the stairs, banana trees with their contrasting colors are featured prominently, and it's this strong contrast between colors that is key to the visual design in Link's Awakening. The Game Boy Color was limited in terms of how many colors per tile and per screen it could display. Now the artists working on this remake had no such constraints, but the game still retains the signature approach to color design and it works extremely well. And then of course you've got the beautiful kind of tilt shift styled graphics and the kind of like the plasticky sheen of, of everything, especially the tops of the trees. It makes things look like little plastic like tangible toys that you could like reach in and pick up and play with which gives the whole game this toy like feel which makes you feel like you're a child playing with toys it, it, it reaches into the nostalgia of the past gives it a fresh coat of paint and then looks wonderful but also just drowns you in memories it's so cool now there's going to be a few people watching this video who are gonna sadly have been a bit too young to have played link's awakening the first time around but that doesn't mean they're not going to enjoy it i mean i never played resident evil 2 before uh, i played the resident evil 2 remake and that's like said, one of my games of the year um and this game uh the the way it's been remade and revamped is going to bring joy to whoever plays it, whether they've got nostalgic feelings about the game or not. They're not going to have the same kind of nostalgic joy that um, people of my age will have when they play it, but still, um, there's a load in there for people to experience for the first time, which uh, I think is going to blow them away anyway. I do wonder, though, what nostalgia is going to be like for people of that age for people who are children now and maybe won't have massive physical copies of games to like stock up and hoard and pick out every so often and hold and smell and you know get memories from in 30 years time a, an 11 year old who played a bunch of Fortnite with his mates isn't going to be able to climb up into the loft of his parents' attic and pull out a Fortnite box or a Fortnite cart and, you know, hold it and play it and boot up an old console and play Well, they might be able to boot up an old console and play it, I guess, but it's not going to be the same as bringing out a cart and sticking it in something or being able to display the box on the shelf. And I kind of feel a little bit sorry for them uh, if that's the case there's still physical copies around uh, one of our viewers uh, Saul Reed he sent me a, uh, a tweet of a video showing him unboxing his Link's Awakening collector's edition which is awesome and that has a cart in it as well so you know 30 years down the line hopefully there'll be some kids pulling that out of the loft and playing it as well but it does feel like at some point nostalgia is going to take a bit of a knock uh, because there's going to be a lack of physical editions to look back on. I mean, what is going to happen to digital services when they get turned off? People are going to lose those games forever, I, I, I think. And, you know, how are they going to remember them? I'm getting, I'm getting a bit sad about this. But yeah, at the moment, nostalgia's not going to go anywhere. At least not until my generation are dead and buried anyway. Oh, fuck, that's morbid. Um, yeah, and also Nintendo and Capcom have probably made buckets of cash from uh, Resi and Link's Awakening. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more remakes and remasters uh, coming up in the next few years at least. 
anyway, I think that's enough of my unscripted rant. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to get stuff off my chest, I think, and talk about how old stuff makes me feel good. Uh, if you have nostalgic memories of games, it doesn't have to be Link's Awakening, it could be any game, but do share your nostalgic memories with us in the comments below. I love to hear about people's um, memories. Um, if you did like this video, do give it a like, do subscribe. I'm sure I'll be back with a, a scripted video again soon, so you won't have all these umming and ahrings and weird pauses every so often. And uh, yeah, do sit back and relax and perhaps click on one of these videos that are on screen now. Uh, as I play you out with a couple of tunes uh, on my uh, ocarina here. Um, okay. <laughs>